This video has been such a long time coming. I actually thought about making this an entire YouTube series or even turning this into like a paid course. But at this point, I think I just need to give y'all this information and we can decide what we want to do with it later on. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is, in my opinion, the best way to make money on Twitch, and that is with digital products. The reason that I love digital products so much more than traditional subs, bits, or tips is because subs, bits, and tips take so long to build yourself up to the point where you can sustainably, reliably be a full-time streamer with just those income streams alone. If I had waited until I was making enough money from my stream to be a full-time time streamer, I probably wouldn't have been a full-time streamer until like two years after I got partnered, and that's assuming that I did all of the exhausting work to keep up with the growth path that I was on. You might have also heard that you need to be making a lot of free stuff for people. Free products are incredible. They definitely have their place. I have some free stuff too, and I want to make a lot more in the future, but the problem with free is that not a lot of us are in the financial situation to be able to create a lot of stuff for free because then we just won't be able to pay our bills. So digital products are a great solution if you're in this type of a situation. What you have to do is you make the thing once and then you sell it pretty much forever after that and you're consistently making an income from it. This also helps because a lot of your viewers probably already want to give you $20 or $25. And so if you have a physical product or digital product to give them in return for that money, you can convince them to spend it a lot easier and they also get something more valuable from it in return as opposed to just supporting the creator and creating the space. I actually talked about this a lot more in my video of how to make a hundred dollar month payout every single month on Twitch. If you haven't checked that one out already, make sure that you watch that if you want to learn more about this. So the digital product that I'm talking about, of course, is my ebook, Build Your Dream Stream, which I released on my birthday, March 19th, 2019. And it has sold 1,190 copies, which is $26,600. $98. So I've made in the last year $27,000 from my ebook. That means that I've made 27k without factoring in subs, bits, and tips, YouTube ad revenue, sponsorships, coaching, or my business, Stream Coach Academy. But it's really hard to write an ebook if you don't know what the process looks like and if you think that you have nothing valuable to say to people. So in this video, what I really want to do is show you that you have a book inside of you or another digital product, whether that's a course or trading cards or you come up with some crazy off the wall idea so that you can monetize your stream better. You have that in you regardless if you have 10 viewers or 10,000. What's up everyone? It's Ashney. I've been a stream coach for two and a half years and my goal with this channel is that I want to help you grow your viewers like I did. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who just inherently understand streaming, but that just was not the case for me. I stream to 20 people for four freaking years and it was so miserable and exhausting and trying to figure out how to grow took me a really really long time but after I learned all the lessons that I'm sharing with you on this channel I was able to grow my stream to like 250 300 average viewers put out an ebook that was featured in ninja's book and go on to build a pretty successful stream coaching business and all of that is available to you as well you just need the information to be able to do so if you want to ask me any questions about any of that, my journey, or even how to maybe create your own digital product, you can come hang out with us in Discord. There's a link for you down below. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the process that I use to create my own ebook. There are a lot of different steps to this process. I'm only going to have time to glaze over each step. So if you want me to go more in depth in another video about a specific step in the process, make sure that you comment down below and let me know. The first step to monetizing in this way is that you need to research what the process of creating a digital product is actually like. But you don't want to research too much because if you do it too much, you're actually going to paralyze yourself into not taking action at all. I did this for probably like six months where I felt like I had to absorb every single YouTube video about how to write an ebook, every single blog post, every single book, every single podcast episode so that I had all the information to make the 
absolute perfect ebook. But the problem with this is that once again, you end up not taking action at all and it just doesn't have to be perfect. I think oftentimes whenever streamers want to release a, a new project or maybe start a YouTube channel, we think that it has to be absolutely perfect to be acceptable, but you will learn the more that you put things out there. And so you shouldn't aim for perfection. What you should aim for is to learn from the process. Yeah, you wanna research a little bit, like you don't wanna put out absolute garbage, but you don't need to spend more than a couple of days is researching how to create the product that you want to create. You're going to learn a lot more from the actual process of creating it than you ever will from consuming a ton of content about it. The next step is that you want to come up with your idea for your book. For a lot of you, this is going to be difficult, but the idea for your book can be literally anything. You can teach people something. You can write a story about your life. It could be a photography book. It could be an art book. It can be literally whatever people watch you for. So the reason that this step is going to be really difficult for some of you is that you don't really know who your audience is. So I did, I think it was like a 45 minute training over how to figure out who your audience is and how to choose them. Make sure that you watch that if you are confused at all on what type of audience you are trying to grow. And I also have a workbook for you. If you haven't checked that out yet, my workbook has the six exercises in, in it that I used to figure out who I wanted to create for and what I really wanted to do as a content creator long term. And I feel like those two resources are so important if you feel like you have no idea what idea you should actually be putting out into the world as far as physical products go because you need to know who you are and who you create for first. For me, I had already done the exercises in my workbook. I had already spent the time kind of developing this brand of being a stream educator. And so I knew I wanted my book to be about the things that I had learned that took me from 20 viewers for four years to 100 viewers plus. After you've come up with your idea, the next step is that you're just gonna do a brain dump of literally everything that you think should be in this book. This is supposed to be messy and unorganized. Actually, I have mine. Let's go to my computer. Welcome to my computer. <laughs> so this is the actual legitimate document that I use to create my ebook. I do all of my big like brain dump planning of products and business ideas in Evernote. And then if they need consistent maintenance and they need to be constantly worked on, that's whenever I actually use Trello, which some of y'all have seen in previous videos. I feel like we should do a Trello video of how I use everything at some point, but I digress. This is how you do a brain dump. You literally just write out everything that's in your brain about the book that you want to create. And then you can make a checklist where you can go through and check things off as you remember to talk about them. That way you don't forget anything. The next step for you is that you want to actually organize all of this information, which you can do in Evernote too. So if I just scroll down, you can see I said the outcome is I want to help streamers grow their viewership. And then I organized all of the things that I wanted to talk about into chapters that made sense sequentially so that the book didn't feel like it was just all over the place with 50 million different ideas. Every single idea kind of built on each other. So I started with intro, why I wrote it, why you should read it, and then I did chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, four, five, six, and seven. Next step is pre-selling. So pre-selling is you putting basic information about your product out there and allowing people to pay for it ahead of time. The reason pre-selling is so important is because you don't want to put a ton of your time and energy and effort into a product or a project that isn't actually going to be worth anything. And so pre-selling is something that you do to validate your idea. If people actually pay for it before it's created, then you know that it's worth creating because people will actually buy it. But if they don't end up paying for it during this pre-sell phase, then you don't actually have to spend all of that time and energy creating the product. I love pre-selling. I do it with all my products. I will do it probably with every single product that I ever release. And the reason for that is because it helps me save a ton of time and energy. It's also really motivating to see people commit their money to a product that 
you're creating. During your pre-sale, you really only need to do three things. The first one is you need to share that outline that you created in the last step with people. So they have a general sense of what your book is actually going to include. The second thing is that you need to set a launch date. So you're setting a deadline for yourself and you're setting a deadline for the people who are pre-buying your book. So that way you all know when this thing is going to launch. It's going to be a really exciting moment. The third thing that you need to do is you need to allow people to commit their money to that product. Now with most websites that you're going to use to pre-sell a book, they're not actually going to take the money from the people who pre-purchase your book whenever they do decide to commit to pre-buying it. That money isn't going to come out of their account until the book actually launches. And so that's something that you need to make sure that everyone knows whenever they pre-sign up for it that they're not actually paying right now. This should be its entire own video. I don't know why I'm going in that in depth on this right now. <laughs> the website that I used for this was Gumroad. I love Gumroad so much. I recommend it to everybody. And I also have some footage of what happened whenever I first put my book up for pre-sale the first night of it. Look at this. I just refreshed the page, but I haven't looked at it yet. So I'm going to look at it now and see what it says. Holy crap. <laughs> Wow! 545 people have seen the campaign, 56 sales, $1,120 while I slept. You know what's wild is I legit thought I would be happy with this book if I made $40 from it. Your pre-sale phase is going to tell you really quickly whether or not people are actually going to buy this. If they are going to buy it and you can tell, then you want to move to this next step, which is the writing process. This is super self-explanatory, literally just write out based on the outline that you've already created. But the big caveat here, do not edit anything. Write out massive chunks of text, no formatting, no spell checking, nothing. That's going to come in the next step. Speaking of next step, your next step after you have written literally this entire book is to edit it. Whenever you edit it, this is where the formatting is going to come in, the spell checking, the everything else. I personally prefer to hire for this. So I hired a couple of copywriters that were in my community to look over the book for me and format it all for me and help me decide what content was missing and add that content to it. The reason that I decided to hire for this is because it's always better when you're creating a product to get more eyeballs on it if possible. Your pre-sell is going to determine whether or not you can actually hire for this. So some of you are going to be in a financial situation where you can afford editors either way, but if you can't afford an editor right now and you can tell that your pre-sell is doing really well, what you can do is you can give a percentage of your pre-sales to the people that you hire whether that's editors, designers, or whoever else, marketers, in order to pay them for the work that they've done, you're literally just going to give them a percentage of whatever you make. Don't just assume that every editor, designer, or marketer is going to be able to do this for you though, because not everyone is cool with that type of payment structure. So you definitely want to make sure that you ask before you just assume that they're going to be okay with you using their services based on a percentage payment system. After the whole thing is edited and formatted, it needs to get sent to a designer. The reason that you want to hire a designer is because you're probably not one yourself. If you are, you can obviously do this step on your own, but there is a reason that I hired one. This is my design. This is Brito's design. Hire her. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if she's taking commissions and I don't want to volunteer her services or anything. So just look for a designer and please give them a percentage of the money that you make too, because they should get paid as well, of course. <laughs> the next step in this process is determining and creating your bonuses. So I always think of digital products as an opportunity for me to really over deliver based on someone's expectation of the product. And so what I did was I actually created two secret bonuses for the people who pre-purchased my book and they actually come with the book even now. I made an audiobook because I like to be inclusive and, and create that stuff just in case people don't want to visually read or can't read. Um, and then the workbook was actually also attached to the ebook. So bonuses make people feel like, ooh, I'm getting something additional and also helps beef up your sales page, which is a massively important part of getting sales 
from your ebook long term. Let me show you mine because this is actually our next step. The next step in your process after all of this other stuff is done is to make your sales page. You could actually be making the sales page while your editors and your designer are doing their work too, so that you're kind of doubling up on the work and you're getting stuff done faster. Now a sales page definitely needs to be its own separate video because I cannot get into the intricacies of all of this here. But basically the idea is that this is a page that people can come to, to figure out what the book is about, to answer any questions that they have about the book, and to just understand what they're gonna get from it and what other people have gotten from it too. So this is something that builds credibility and that helps you sell it long term because you're gonna talk about this URL and you're gonna send people to the sales page throughout all of your content in the future. And that's how you keep getting sales on your digital products long term. After your sales page is up, you've pretty much done everything that you need to do in order to create this ebook. And so now it's time to launch and celebrate. You should definitely stream on the launch day of your digital product, whatever it is, because you want to celebrate that big milestone with your community. This to me is like a birthday stream. Anytime one of these happen, it is so exciting. There's a ton of energy and you're probably going to generate a lot of sales from people who are coming in and excited about that energy and also from people who didn't know that you were pre-selling a product. So for me, I launched and I streamed during that day. I sold $460 during that actual stream and the entire pre-sell process before the launch stream was $4,200. Blaze it. <laughs> All right, we just finished the stream. Uh, I got a little bit broken. Everyone was super nice today and so kind and supportive. It's also my birthday, so it was crazy. But I'm gonna show you numbers again just after the stream. So we were at just over 200 sales last time that uh, we checked in, which was before the stream, immediately before the stream. So during the stream, we got around 25 to 30 sales, which just kind of shows you the power of streaming and talking to your community about what you're doing. I really think that the reason for this is because people want to tip generally, or they want to give subs, or they want to support you in some way financially during the streams. But it's a lot easier to get them to do so and to get them to follow through whenever you have an actually valuable thing beyond just, hey, here's my stream to give them, right? So if you've got something that you can release that is a good value exchange for their money, it almost seems like people are way more likely to support financially whenever they know that they're gonna get a piece of value or a thing you've been working on for that exchange, right? So, so that means the total amount that I made on launch day and during the entire pre-selling process was $4,660, which seems like a freaking astronomical amount. Whenever I saw this number, it blew my mind. I expected to make 40 freaking dollars, y'all. For someone who grew up poor their entire life and had such a massive moment like this online, it really made me realize the power of the skill of like learning how to make money online. I had never made this amount of money from anything in my life ever before and so I knew that if I could replicate this process over and over and over again for myself that I could have a career forever online regardless if I was streaming or making content or not. There isn't really a lot for you to do after this really exciting launch day, but there are two things that you need to do to maintain selling your digital product. One is that you want to make sure that you keep talking about it because with digital products, whenever you stop talking about it, you stop making sales. You will eventually get to a point, hopefully, where you have a funnel system built up to sell your product for you. That way you literally don't have to do anything. But for the most part at this point, you're going to want to be selling this book through your YouTube channel, your Twitch streams, your social media, and after a while of you talking about it from time to time where it fits in naturally, people are going to start giving you testimonials and they'll start talking about your product and saying how much it helps them. And then you just share those posts. And at that point, you don't 
do anything. You're just sharing the stuff and it's selling because of what other people are saying. The second thing that you want to do is you need to have an email list of the people who have bought your book because whenever somebody buys into a product that you've sold, they're more likely to buy the next thing and buy the next thing. And this means that you have a list of people that you can go to anytime that you decide you want to launch a new product in the future. And part of them are probably going to buy from you again if they enjoyed their first experience. I don't think that you have to be like sending them emails every three days, bugging them, spamming them, all that kind of stuff, but just keep those emails on lock so that you can at some point go back to them in the future. This stuff is not just for Ninja and Pokimane and all those other successful streamers, y'all. The faster that you start looking at Twitch in a different light whenever it comes to monetization, the faster you're gonna reach your goal of being a full-time content creator. Absolutely, we wanna do this ethically. We don't want to just be scamming people out of their money or tricking them into buying products that they don't actually need or get any use from. However, I really believe that if more streamers start to approach Twitch from a an entrepreneurial perspective, they're going to be able to reach their goals so much faster because there are so many other ways of making money, growing your stream, getting more viewers, getting more attention from people out there than what y'all have been hearing for years and years and years. But I really do think that in order to get yourself to this point, your mindset about making money and about growing online has to be on point. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with the idea of even creating a book. You're going to have a ton of imposter syndrome about it. You're not going to believe that you can actually do it. So I created this video for you that's going to talk to you a little bit more about the mindset behind making money on Twitch. Make sure that you go and watch that one and I'll see you over there. 